Hello dear students, today our topic is role of palynology in plant systematics. In this lecture we are discussing these aspects. Number one, to briefly introduce the discipline of palynology. Number second, to describe the pollen characters of systematic value. Number third, to highlight the various roles of palynology in the plant systematics. First we will discuss what do you mean by palynology. Palynology is the branch of plant sciences which deals with the study of pollen grains. The term was first coined by Ernest Antius and co-workers in 1944. The term is derived from a Greek word pali, which means dust or fine floor. The dominating object of palynology is pollen grain, the point of origin and the carrier for male gametes. Pollen grain is represent an extra generation in seed plants, the highly reduced male gametophyte. Therefore, pollen grains are not simply a part of the plant, such as leaves or seed, but are the haploid counterpart of the much larger diploid plant body. Pollen grains are often easily disseminated by the wind. During their transport, pollen grains is completely separate from the parent plant body and perfectly adopted for their role, that is their role in the transfer of male genetic material and are able to resist to hostile environmental citrus on their way to the female flower pot. Pollen grain usually possesses a number of variable features. First, the shape and symmetry of the pollen grain. Second, the architecture of its wall, exine stratification, sculpture, structure and type. Number third, number, position, shape, and structure of its aperture are some of the basic characters of pollen grains, which prove very useful in the palynological study of plants. Pollen grains are found almost in every type of habitat, for example, in glacier ice, in the air, over the pools, and over the oceans. Fossil pollens are found in peat and other sediments, in lignite, coal and shells. They are evident since pre-Cambrian times, hundreds of millions of years ago. Most primitive angiosperms shed their pollen grains at two nucleate stage, whereas in most advanced groups, pollen is shed at three nucleate stage. Angiosperms mostly have pollen grains of radial symmetry, bilateral symmetry being found in several gymnosperms, most pollen grains are globose in shape, although both shaped ellipsoidal and fusiforms are also met in different angiosperms. Since most pollen grains at least in early stages form tetrads, the outer end of the grain is termed as distal pole, while as the inner end as proximal pole, and the line joining the two poles as polar axis. The line running around the pollen at right angles to the polar axis is termed as equator. Palynology is one of the most effective tools to reconstruct past environment. Because exine, the hard outer wall of pollen grains of different species are unique and can survive in unfavorable conditions for thousands of years, palynologists can identify many plants that were present in the past. Working with this precious information, archaeologists can then discover more about how humans in the past interacted with their environment. Pollen wall has been a subject of considerable attention for the study of evolutionary history of angiosperms. Nair in 1974 stated that palynological characters have been used in solving several taxonomic problems including the repositioning of several disputed taxa and interpretation of problems relating to their origin and evolution of different groups. Haywood 1967 has gone up to the extent of stating that exine details of pollen are such that they can be used in plant identification, much in the way that fingerprints are used for the identification of criminals. Number second, pollen characters of systematic value. First, we will discuss pollen aggregation. Microsporogenesis yields four microspores, which mature into four pollen greens. In majority of angiosperms, the pollen greens separate prior to release. 
such a pollen grains is known as monodes. In rare cases, pollen grains are released as fused in the form of pears when they are known as diodes. In many angiosperms, the four microspores do not separate and pollen grains form a tetrod. Five different types of tetrods were identified in angiosperms. First, tetrahedral tetrod in which four pollen grains form a tetrahedron. In other words, four male gametes compacted in a sphere. Such pollen grains are found in the family Ericaceae. Second, linear tetrod in which four pollen grains arranged in a straight line as was reported in the genus Typha. Third, rhomboidal tetrod in which four pollen grains in one plane were two separated from one another by closely contact of the other two. Fourth, tetragonal tetrod in which four pollen grains are in one plane and equally spaced as in highly drum genus. Number fifth, decussate tetrod in which four pollen grains in two pairs arranged at right angles to one another, as in the genus Lacanthus. In some genera, such as Calendra of Mimosidae, the pollen grains are conate in a group of more than four. Such pollen grains constitute a polyod. A polyad generally consists of eight pollen grains and rarely of more than ten. In some members of family, like Orchidaceae, for example, Pipera, large number of pollen grains form irregular groups, of which there are more than one group in a theca. These are known as Masuli. In subfamily Ascalpidae of family Apocynaceae, and some members of Orchidaceae, all pollen grains of a theca are fused into a single mass known as pollinium. The pollen grain wall is made up of two important principal layers. Outer is exine and inner intine. The exine is hard and impregnated with a sporopollen, a substance that makes it resistant to decay and enables its preservation in fossil records. Exine is further differentiated into two layers outer act exine and inner end exine. The act exine is further distinguished into basal, foot layer, radially elongated columella and roof like tectum. In some taxa, the columella may be replaced by a granular middle layer. Similarly, in some primitive angiosperms, tectum is lacking, a tectate pollen green, and some exine appears granular. Abolayers of exine are clearly visible under an electron microscope, but when observed under a light microscope, the inner layer known as nexine includes endexine plus foot layer of ectexine. The upper layers consist of columella, tectum, and supratectal sclepturing, constitute sexine. Pollen aperture is a specialized region of pollen wall through which the pollen tube comes out. The exine may be in aperturate, that is without an aperture, or we can also designate it as aperturate. Angiosperms contain two basic types of pollen greens, monocolpate pollen greens and tricolpate pollen greens. First, we will discuss monocolpate pollen. Monocolpate pollen grains is aperturate pollen with a single slit running at right angles to the equator. Such pollen grains are characteristics of primitive dicotyledons, several monocotyledons, pteridosperms, and cycads. Second, tricolpate pollen grain. Tricolpate pollen grain is having three slits, each with a germinal pore in middle and a globose in shape. Pollen with three pores is known as triporate, with many pores known as multiporate, accompanied by a variety of surface ornamentations. 
Pollen grains with silicates joined at, po at poles is termed as syncolpate. Aperture having three branches is known as trichotomosolate. Some families such as Asclepidaceae, Brassicaceae, Poaceae, etc. having a single morphological pollen type that is only monoporate aperture and somewhat smooth axine surface is known as stenopalinus or uniopalinus while as others such as astraci, acanthaceae, euphorbaceae, rubaceae and verbenaceae families show different types of pollen grains which vary in shape, aperture, axine stratification therefore termed as uriopalinus or multipalinus. Plantus taxa showing stenopalinus condition is of considerable systematic importance. Dear students, now we will discuss the role of palynology in plant systematics. Pollen of anemophilus plants is usually small, rounded and smooth, rather thin walled and dry, with shallow furrows. Anemophilus pollen is found in some families like Betulaceae, Cypraceae, Poaceae, Salicaceae and several other families. Insect and bird pollinated pollen on other hand is large, sculptured and often coated with adhesive, waxy or oily substance. The pollen of Astraceae is highly elaborate but simplification towards loss of sculpturing has occurred in several genera of Astraceae with wind pollination. The vestigial Scattered patches of adhesive layer on wind pollinated pollen have been considered as evidence of the derivation of anemophily from antimophily. According to Mayer 1975, gymnosperms contain alluvular or granular act axine and laminated and axine, whereas angiosperms contain columnar or granular act axine and non-laminated end axine. Based on pollen morphological studies in monocotyledons, it has been proposed that halobi are not related to other monocots, but are specialized polycarpaceae with ranelian affinities. Copernua is also of the view that most monocotyledon families could be considered as have evolved from some families such as Ericaceae or Lilaceae. On the palynological basis of the triphyletic theory of angiosperms, three well-defined evolutionary stocks among angiosperms are recognized, which includes monocot stock, Magnolian dicot stock and Ranelian dicot stock. Palynological studies have been very useful in the elucidation of phylogenetic relationships. For example, pollen morphology does not support sharp demarcation between the dicotyledons and the monocotyledons, as suggested by some systems of classification world over, because dicotyledons pollen characters also occur in some monocotyledons and vice versa. A massive axine and thin entine is present in angiosperm pollen, but in certain taxa among monocotus, for example, Amarlidaceae, Massaceae, Gingerberaceae, the axine is highly reduced and entine is well defined. In Lamaceae, two nucleate pollen grains are generally triculpate, while as three nucleate pollen grains are hexaculpate. Palynological studies suggest that Thunerbijoidae of Acanthaceae family should be given a family status. Palynological evidences have supported the separation of Pionaceae from Ranunculaceae and Nilombonaceae from Nymphaceae. 
based on the pollen morphology, 16 Indian species of cypress and prepared a key to differentiate all of them on the basis of pollen characters. Pollen characters have proved useful in distinguishing the genera Phytoloca and Revilinia of Phytolocaceae and several genera of Acanthaceae, Betulaceae and Primulaceae. Exine pattern is very useful in recognizing different species of genus Bohunia. Removal of Podophyllum from Burbidaceae and it is inclusion in a separate family Podophyllaceae is on the basis of palynological characters. Separation of Nilumbo from Nymphaceae into its own family that is Nilumbonaceae is highly supported by tricolpate pollen of Nilumbo as against the monosulcate pollen condition in Nymphaceae. The division of the genus Polygonum into seven genera is based on pollen morphology as Bastota, Phagopyrum, Conigia, Persicaria, Polygonium, Peliropatropum, and Tenaria, which are distinct in their pollen types. Species of anemone can be distinguished on the basis of germinal aperture and pollen. It is three zono colpate in anemone opticoloba, pentaporate in anemone alchemifolia, and pentocolpate in anemone rivularis, and supraaperturate in anemone fulgenesis. The genus Salicus and Populus under Salicaceae can be distinguished on the basis of pollen characters. Salicus has long and narrowed three furrowed pollen grains, while populus has spherical pollen without distinct apertures. Pollen size is helpful in distinguishing two species of genus Malva. One is Malva rotundifolia with pollen size is 74 to 84 micrometers and Malva slivestris pollen size is 105 to 126 micrometers. Dear students, with this we come to the end of today's lecture. Hope you have enjoyed and understood it well. Thank you for watching.